we have five or ten minutes uh, just as a group time now, just talking about anything that comes up. I will openly confess that I don't, do not know everything. If you've got a question, I shall do as uh, the New Testament says and deflect to my church leader. <laughs> Submit to your leaders. Is that right, John? And then after that, yeah. we'll have a, a break. We'll have a, uh, get some tea or coffee, and then we'll come back for the second session. Anyone got any comments or insights, further insights than what we can talk about in five minutes? <coughs> I, I just thought as I went through this, and then I'm just thinking of this whole thing about darkness and, and sin as darkness and God being in the light. And, uh, and I mean, I, I'll use an example as a soldier that um, the time you're likely to get attacked is at last light and at first light and, and you when you're actually out in uh, patrols or whatever you have what you call stand to and you and before last light you go going all round defence and wait for the enemy to attack you and at first light you wait for the you, you all get up and you're all there all prepared and you stand to positions with your arms of fire and, and you know that you've worked out in the light waiting for the enemy to come and uh, but when you're there and you're really tired and everything uh, and you're in the darkness you, your eyes adjust to the, your you know your eyes adjust to the dark and as I'm reading that I'm thinking that it's very easy for me to adjust to the dark and pretend it's light to me and and in that uh, first light when you're waiting and you just want it over and you and you, you want to go up and, and, and cook your breakfast and have a cup of tea and everything, you're almost willing it to, for it to be light and you're pretending to yourself. And so to me, the thing that came through to me was, in my life, do I sometimes try and calm myself that when things are dark and it's sin, that, uh, sort of that I pretend that there's light when it's actually darkness? So that was that was my very interesting. Sometimes we like to kid ourselves, don't we? Yeah. <clears throat> and sometimes we get a slap round the ears. Or I do anyway. Or the other. Or the other end. I can't say I can't say the other end. Don't offer another military yeah. analogy. No. But it's always the middle watch when yes. you're at, uh, you're most at risk. And the middle watch is from midnight until 4 a.m., to put it for you uh, land lovers. And of course, that's uh, traditionally you known when you're at your lowest ebb, you know, the devil will get in. Yeah. So be sure of that. Keep the middle watch, keep that secure, <coughs> and the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. I think for me, really, is uh, that it's come to be more and more and more, and I know I've heard it all my life the blood of Christ because I really sometimes can't get away from the thoughts in my mind or mm. my life. Mm. And then I realise that this blood, which I don't always want to talk about, but um, is his blood covers me. Mm. And so when I'm tempted to go back and look at the sin, I have to remind myself that his blood has taken mm. complete the blood is there, not mm. my sin. Mm. And I think there's more power in the blood than I realise and we realise. Mm. And I think the more perhaps I dwell on that, the less I keep cringing in my own sin. Mm. Sure. Mm -hmm. what I'm yep. <laughs> it's something that <coughs> has come lately. Even the, the Bible studies on Revelation TV has brought that home many times. never wanted to dwell on it in a sense because of <coughs> what it meant but it does cover mm. I think for me um, Christ will touch you when you're most vulnerable when you're sick when you're ill and for me when I was in hospital last year with this dreadful abscess on my throat 
and I desperately wanted to be baptised on the Sunday and was touch and go whether I would. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Lord was really with me 100% that particular week mm -hmm. in such a way that my illness and my mm -hmm. abscess was nothing to what he had gone through. Mm -hmm. And that made me so aware. It really turned my life around to think, this is nothing to what he suffered. And from that point, I felt that I was touched and I've never looked back. Mm. And it's made me look towards the light every single day and be more aware of the sins mm. of life and the darkness. Mm. And that, yes, as this gentleman said, you can be misled mm. in the dark, but mm. you know it's evil, mm. it's going to be evil. So just keep following the light, keep thinking about the Lord, mm -hmm. and not about yourself, but also then in turn to help others that are going mm -hmm. through or may go through a similar experience. If I can just say, in response to the first question, which was the difference between God's attitude to sin and ours, I don't think we can anywhere near approach how we are hurting our Lord. No. Nope and damaging our relationship with mm -hmm. him, with even what we would consider a trivial sin. Mm -hmm. um, and the thought that came into my mind was the fact that every time we sin, it's almost like nailing Christ back on the cross mm -hmm. again. Yep. Because he died in order to restore our fellowship mm -hmm. with God. But when we sin, we break mm -hmm. that fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so if, uh, that's what just came into my head now as I was reading 1 John mm -hmm. and... I just thought, yes, how dreadful to be putting our dear Lord back in that position again every time we, we sin. But do, do you not think that, I mean, I think of uh, as a parent, don't you? I mean, this whole thing about the relationship with parent. And with my kids, uh, uh, I accept the fact that they're going to mess up. Uh, but the thing that I'm looking for them for is uh, uh, I, I, I don't want them to... When they mess up, I don't want them to be to be labouring it and 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 to be like uh, a ton weight on their heads. But I want contrition from them. I, I want them to feel that 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 they have done wrong and they realise they've done wrong and they're really sorry that they've done wrong. And you you know, and, and me as their parents, that, that they're saying to me, "Look, Dad, you know, I really messed up here. You know, I'm really sorry." And I think in a way. Our relationship with God is like that, mm -hmm. that, that he doesn't want us to be wandering around and having psychological problems. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can, like anything, you can get extremes with this, mm -hmm. and, he doesn't, and he doesn't want that. I, mean, mm -hmm. do you, do you think? I, I think it was just a fact, just as I say, I was reading, and it's just that thought that came into me, is, you know, we were saying about daily penitence. And I know in my quiet time, yes, I say, I'm sorry, Lord for the sins I've committed, you know, and I think, sometimes I'm sitting there thinking, am I just going through, let's right. face it, an awful lot of Christians do, just going through the road, which, when, especially if you have a set, you know, like printed out word, you know, we come before you to confess our sin, uh, it's all too easy to say the words and not really get to the heart and the depth mm -hmm. that you mean it. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, what I was thinking to myself was, Lord, make my heart truly sorry when I'm coming to you, not just saying words, you know, I'm sorry, Lord, you know, I've messed up again, I'm sorry, I've sinned, and it's all too easy, and you know in your heart you're just saying those words. Are you really grasping what, what you're doing to our Lord every time you sin, you, you're messing up that relationship again? Um, and I thought, it's just from, from my point of view, making myself realise it's, it's not a... A silly thing, you know, like sometimes you'll get a small child will do something wrong and they'll, they'll just come up and, I mean, I've had my daughter-in-law say this now, what do you say to your sister? Sorry. So, it's that sort of attitude, yeah. you know, we must be so careful. Yeah. And yes, we've got this wonderful relationship, our Lord has saved us and we are His, but, but not to at the same time forget what depth of hurt mm -hmm. it is to him and the fact that, yes, we're struggling, we're trying to keep that relationship with him, uh, but to be careful not to take it too lightly when we actually come and say sorry to him.
realise just what it's doing to him. I, that, I'm looking at Dave's first question, you see, what's God's mm. reaction, what's mine? And I think mine's nowhere near, obviously, what God is feeling. Um, I might add, if I may, I've, I use seven words to answer that question, that first question. That's God's view and my view. And God's view is absolute. No sin. You know, that's absolute. It's clear cut. Where mine is all too often subjective and relative. I, we don't recognise when we've sinned or we put it to one side or uh, it's not quite sin. We fudge it. We fudge it, yeah. That's right. So it's uh, we're subjective. Well, we want to go our own way. Don't we? Well, that's what I want. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. We want to do our own thing. We want to make for ourselves. You know, if we um, we've sinned, but um, <coughs> we forget quite often that the Lord has made a way for forgiveness for our sins. Like Mary was saying, you know, He died on the cross and spilt His blood for us. So His way of looking at our sins. Um, it's quite different, uh, like Joyce was saying, quite different really to how we uh, view them. I think mm -hmm. a lot of the time we sin and we don't even raise a hair, we don't yeah. take any notice. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, we've got to be more aware of trying to, like this question asks us, how does God feel about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I think we're, we like to be self-sufficient, we think we can work without ourselves and we can. We've got to have his help. You know, he's given us his help by his forgiveness, but we still don't cling on to that, do we? We still want to be self-sufficient. We easily forget. Mm. Right, well, you say our memories are short, aren't we? <laughs> I think Tony's point about the light and the darkness, we can very easily, all of us can get into a stage where we are, in a sense, blinded. And darkness, we get used to it. I mean, the devil loves to keep us in darkness, doesn't he? That's his, that's his job, that's his motive. Uh, but of course, reading through 1 John here, you know, um, the Lord brought light to our, 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 our lives. And if we, um, if we recognise that and continue to look to him for the light, darkness will disappear. I mean, we come into a room which is dark and we automatically take it for granted that we can switch on the light. Uh, mm. But how, uh, how do we take a wonder for granted the fact that the Lord is the light? Mm -hmm. now, we, we know it, we've read it stacks of times, haven't we? But we've really got to believe it, as, as, as you said. You know, we've got to, oh, the Lord's forgiven me for this mm -hmm. sin, whatever. And we've got to recognise that and believe it. It's easy, it's easy to sort of push it at once and take it for granted, but... He's done a lot, of, lot for us on, on Calvary's cross. Uh, do we put that into action in our own lives? I'll challenge myself on this. Well, we'll take a break then for five minutes. And, but first we'll decide which one would you like to go on to next so I can set it up while you're taking a break. You've got assurance. You have... Yeah, something. Armour. The armour of God. We all there. Get it the right colour. Then you have temptation, you have angels, we have old hairy legs. I think in context of what you've just been talking about and what we're hearing about the struggle and so on, it seems to me that the Christian armour would be a good one to go for. Okay, that's what we'll do in five minutes then, if we take a break, mm -hmm. then we'll come back. Mm -hmm.